welcome to livealittlehigher.com. We continue learning Hovos Halevavo, Duties of the Heart, and we're almost finishing the Gate of Self-Accounting. Um, we have two more classes on this subject. And um, the truth is that what Rabbi Bahi has been teaching us through this chapter, this very long chapter, is how important it is that we are aware, that we are awake, that we look at our lives in a way in which we have an, uh, an ability to, to look within, see what's missing, see what we've accomplished, uh, to be kind to ourselves and, 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 and pat our backs when we are able to accomplish and to really look within and see what needs to be um, refined within ourselves and that to know that Hashem always gives us the tools to be able to do it. That it's, a, it's just a, a, a subject of being aware of our Creator and knowing why we're here, what's our purpose in this world, what's the whole point of being alive and in this time in the world. And to know that Hashem will take us in the way that we desire. So today, He gives us a parable gives us a parable so he can illustrate part of what he has been teaching to us. Uh, and he says, imagine that you are in a certain place above this place on the side behind you. There is a form and there is no way that you can see it with your eyes or observe it with your sense of sight. Someone then tells you that if you were to make a plate of raw iron smooth, it, it, it till its dullness disappears, polish it for a long time, with many polishing agents and then place it in front of yourself, the reflection of the lofty form that had been hidden from you would become visible to you and you would be able to see it and enjoy its grace and radiant beauty. And this reminds me of um, also in Mishlei, there's a subject that says that Hashem is the silversmith. And there's a story of these women that were learning Mishlei and they came up to this uh, pasuk, to this, this teaching, they couldn't really understand what it meant that God was a silversmith. So one of the women said, you know what, let me go and talk to a silversmith and see what is his trade and how he makes this silver polish and understand what this, what this is telling us, what this Mishlei is telling us. And she went to a silversmith. She says, do you mind if I sit down and watch your work? And he says, not at all, you can sit down. And she was watching him and how he took the piece of silver and put it in the fire and took it out of the fire, put it in the fire, took it out of the fire, but he would never let go of this piece of silver. And uh, to a point where she says, well, if you wanna go and have a coffee, can't you just leave it there and then come back for it? He says, no, 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 I would ruin it. And she asked him, how do you know when this piece of silver is ready? He says, when I can see my reflection on it, that's when I know it's ready. So uh, in a certain way here, this parable that Rabbi Bahi is giving us is really the same idea that we're polishing, polishing, polishing until we can see the godliness within us. We're ready when we can, when we can see God within ourselves, when God can see himself in us. So now this lofty and eminent form which you cannot see with your eyes it is the wisdom of the Creator, he's saying. May he be exalted. His power and the beauty of the supernal world, whose form and character are hidden from us, the rod into a plate is a human soul. The polishing of the plate represents the training of the soul in fields of knowledge and moral instructions. Those known from reason and from the Torah. The polishing agents are the 30 ways of accounting that I have mentioned to you. When you meditate on them and reflect regularly on them, your soul will be purified, your mind will be illuminated, illumined, and you will apprehend in your soul every mystery. You will see with open eyes profound forms. The gate of virtues will be open for you, and the veil that interposes between you and your Creator, and, your, and the Creator's wisdom will be removed from over your eyes. God, may he be exalted, will teach you sublime wisdom and effective action, and he will give you divine power. As it says, God's spirit will rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of insight and courage, a spirit of knowledge and awe of God. This is in Yeshiyahu. But the truly wisdom is a spirit in man. 
It is the breath of the Almighty that makes him understand. This is Eov. And he finishes with Mishlei. If you seek it like silver and search, it for, search for it like hidden treasure, then you will grasp what all Hashem is and find knowledge of God. So what he's saying here is that for us to be able to really find God, we have to really polish ourselves inside. If we're not polishing, 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 refining, looking for that kernel of godliness within ourselves, we will never be able to come and, and grasp Hashem's wisdom. And once we do, once we get to that point, then the whole world will be open for us. So he continues saying that self-accounting is obligatory for a person. This is an obligation. This is not even a choice. Like people go through their lives, they don't even count their mistakes. They don't look within themselves. How, how could I do this? Why am I doing this? Why, I, why am I speaking this way? Why do I treat this person this way? You have to look within yourself, uh, you know, introspect. What makes you be the way you are? And really the answers are inside of you. You don't need to go to a therapist to get your answers or talk to him. Look, talk with yourself, look within. And so in accordance, with his power of intellect and excellence of mind at all times, at every moment and if possible with every breath that he takes, so that he never be without all fear and shame before God. Now we have a conscience that Hashem is over us. He's always looking. He's there. He knows everything you're doing. It's, as it says in Perkei Avot, there's an eye that sees, an ear that hears, and everything's recorded in a book. And one might infer this duty from what God commanded the king, and he shall have a copy of this Torah written for him on a scroll before the Kwanim and the Levim. So the Jewish king, he had to go around with carrying a copy of the Torah. He had two separate Torahs. One was in the, in the palace and one he took with him everywhere he went. Why? Because it was a reminder that Hashem was with him always. That he could not do whatever he wanted. He had a, a mission to accomplish and it was a godly mission. And so, furthermore, he said, this book, this book of the Torah shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. This is in Yehoshua. And these words which I command you this day must be on your heart. This is in Devarim. This is the Shema Israel, that they, you should have them in your heart. Bind them as a sign on your hand and let them be a frontlet in the center of your head. He's talking about the feeling. Write them on the doorpost of your houses. He's talking about mezuzahs. And he emphasizes the matter by the commandment of tzitzit. Tzitzit are, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is something that men wear that they put it under their shirts. It's like, a, like a, imagine a vest. Some are made of cotton, some are, are made of wool. They have the blue lines and they have these, these threads that hang it's to remind the person, to remind the man that he has to be holy, that he cannot be a person that acts from the waist down, that he has to think up. And so saying it shall be your tassel that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments. So what further kinds encouragement towards self-accounting, which is part of the meaning of remembering the creator, and could there be that have not already been urged upon us by God? So according, my brother, as Rabbi Bahia speaks, you should adopt the practice of holding yourself to an accounting before God. May he be exalted at all times, at every moment. And do not underestimate any good act that you perform for his sake. Like, look at your good things. Look at your good qualities. Count them. Count your, count your goodness. It's important that a person doesn't forget the good things he does because then he'll fall into depression, he'll feel so bad, so bad that uh, it's, it's contraproductive. So we have to have a balance. We have to see, okay, I'm kind, I'm, good, I'm a good son, I'm a good husband, I'm a good daughter, I'm a good wife, I take care of people, I, I'm a good friend. Like count the good things you have in, your, in, in yourself, but also at the same time, you have to be aware of the things that need to be perfected, that need to be refined. It's not even perfected, it's refinement. So the closest analogy to this is the way the movement of the sun, a distance of a cubit as perceived on earth, corresponds to an actual movement of many miles in the heavens. So if you walk one step in this world, in the heavens, it's like multiplied. So the same is true of the movement of the shadow on the astral level. 
So here, you think you make a little mitzvah. It's a tiny mitzvah. It's a tiny mitzvah. But in the heavens, it's not considered a tiny mitzvah. It's something that is huge because it has repercussions. Like you give, for example, you give sadaqah to someone in need. And so what happens? The money that you work so, far, so hard for suddenly takes another meaning and it's elevated. And then this person that you gave the money will take also 10% from what you gave and will give to another per per person. And that person will do the same. So it's, it's, uh, it's never ending. One kindness, one kindness you do has no end because all the good that comes out from it is merited to you. And so this is, this is what Rabbi Bahia is teaching us today. As the Pirkei Avot says, repent one day before your death. As, as it's written, at, at all times, let your garments be white. And why do, does the Pirkei Avot says this? Like, we don't know when we're gonna die. Have no idea, we're clueless. So what it means really is repent every day because you don't know tomorrow. So every day should be a day of, of repentance, of teshuvah, of getting closer to Hashem, of acknowledging good things that we do, of acknowledging the, the things that need to be repaired. And in that way, we'll, we'll live a very high life. So I wish you a blessed week. And remember, live a little higher. Thank you. Thank you.